I made a mistake. Am I even going to make it? This is the worst hiking conditions I've ever experienced. Does anyone else want to turn around? This is my experience on the famous Acatenango hike in Antigua, Guatemala. Things never go as planned, but there's always a way to learn and grow from it. An early start to the day as I shared breakfast with this ragtag group of solo travelers. We all bonded just two nights ago on an unexpected prep crawl. Molly, Maddie, Ben, and Ollie. Soon we'll all be on a trip of a lifetime. Little did we know what this tour had in store for us and how it was going to test us both mentally and physically and how we'd all grow from it. Starting this tour, we were introduced to Luis, our head tour guide, and his associates, Henry and Andy. Now, Luis is giving us a rundown of the tour. The first leg is about four hours to complete. The distance of six and a half kilometers and 1300 meters of elevation gain and the final elevation being 3,700 meters. We start with a one hour climb to lunch, continued with an additional two hour climb uphill, followed with an easier 45 minute leveled ridge walk to base camp. The optional second leg involved climbing the volcano directly beside Acatenango called Fuego. The hike would be estimated to take about four additional hours. And the third and final leg would involve waking up at 3.30 a.m. and setting out to the peak of Akatenango to see the beautiful sunrise. One and a half kilometers and an elevation of approximately 300 meters, about 45 minutes to an hour. The summit of Akatenango just being shy of 4,000 meters high. Now the hike up was definitely strenuous. And I think if you're in decent shape, you can definitely complete this hike. All the estimated times I provided actually included breaks. Now living in Calgary, I've done plenty of hikes with this distance, elevation gain, and even with a heavy backpack, but rarely have ever done all three at once, especially with this type of elevation. The highest peak I've ever summited in Alberta was 3000 meters. Akatenango, was just shy of 4,000 meters. But I trusted myself with what I've packed and my abilities to complete this hike. Now during this hike, I seemed to keep up with the front of the pack, staying strong and consistent. I talked to both the tour guides, Henry, Luis, and Andy. And one funny thing my Spanish teacher told me was that Oscar is quite a common Spanish name and a usual nickname for Oscar would be Coco. Now I expressed this and had a good laugh with the tour guides, but they took that to heart. And from now on, they referred to me as Coco. After the strenuous four and a half hours, we made it to base camp. But what followed was something I couldn't have imagined. <laughs> I don't think my... Legs could support lifting someone right now. <laughs> At base camp, it was quite cloudy on arrival, but an hour later, everything cleared up and we got to see the second volcano, Fuego. I knew I at least had to attempt this second leg, as my friend, who had just done this hike a few months prior to me, would never let me live it down if I didn't at least attempt the climb but out of the group, I was the most confident that I was going to at least give it a shot. All right, so who's ready to go to Fuego? <laughs> now my confidence did convince my friends to attempt the climb along with me, and three other brave souls joined us. With Luis as our guide, we headed out at six o'clock. Not five minutes later did the hike change. It started pouring rain, the wind picked up, we got lightning, and it also started to hail. But with the hopes of how quickly the weather changed for the worse, we also had hopes it would change for the better once we started to climb up Mount Fuego. Once we reached down to the valley that separated Ecatenango and Fuego, the group agreed that if any one person at any point wanted to turn around, the entire group would turn around together and head back to base camp. 
That's how dangerous we felt climbing down this muddy mountain. But the group was strong and determined. And as it cleared up a little bit, we could see an eruption from the valley on Mount Fuego. With reignited spirit, we continued our climb. The conditions quickly changed again for the worse. The group still felt indifferent on completing the hike. Now halfway up, we voted to actually head back down. With everyone in agreement, we started to make our way back down. Luis pulled us into this little hut to actually share some wine and marshmallows to hopefully lift up our spirits a little bit. Not only until we got into the hut did we realize the hut didn't even have a roof. <laughs> we all had a great laugh and we're still in high spirits. And this is definitely an experience to remember. After we all drank that wine to somewhat warm us up, the hike back up definitely drained a lot of our spirits, especially from Luis. At one point, he asked me to come to the front of the line. And I initially thought he wanted me to guide the group back to base camp. I couldn't have been further from the truth. Coco, this is one of the most hardest hikes I've ever done. And Luis said that to me while sitting on his butt, completely drained of energy and spirits. I quickly realized our guide actually needed motivation. Now with my limited Spanish, I tried to give him a pep talk. This is also one of the most difficult hikes I've ever been on. And yes, we didn't get a view, but we all knew that when we signed up. The biggest accomplishment was that we tried. Now I took off my glove, showing him my ring. Seek discomfort. I wear this ring to remind myself to become stronger. I must be in discomfort. Right now, Luis, we're both in discomfort. This rain, mud, wind, and I'm sure everyone is also exhausted. We're all obviously in a massive amount of discomfort, but because of it, we're stronger. And I'm so glad we at least gave it a shot, an attempt to climb Fuego. And with that pep talk, we slowly made our way back to base camp. And once we finally arrived, everyone was quite relieved. We were treated with a piping hot plate of noodles and hot chocolates. And slowly, one by one, everyone turned in for the night. I stuck around and being the last person, I was invited into the hut of the tour guides and they continued to cook their dinners as they hadn't eaten yet, especially for Luis. And I had a beautiful and humbling conversation with them about my travels and where everyone else's favorite part of Guatemala was. I truly cherish this moment and it's these moments and experiences I want to share with everyone. The morning blessed us with clear skies and you could see a beautiful view of Fuego and the sunrise. Now it's impossible for me to really describe what I was feeling in that moment, but if I were to really try and describe it, it felt like my entire life force was renewed and I genuinely fell in love with what I had accomplished. Now back at base camp, we continued to try to warm up and we had beautiful skies to see Mount Fuego erupt several times over. I have to say this was absolutely beautiful and everything up to this point was definitely worth it. On the hike down, Luis gestured at me to stay at the back of the group. And until we were earshot away from everyone else, he pulled out a necklace that said Fuego and gave it to me. And he said, Coco, don't tell anyone else in the tour. I don't have enough for everyone else, but thank you for the pep talk. And I won't ever forget to seek discomfort. With that being said, I took off my ring and gave it to Luis and told him, I'm glad I left a positive impact. Now, if you don't already know, Seek discomfort is something that Yesteri 
came up with. And I love the message that they're sharing with the world. It's heavily impacted who I am and who I want to become. I love the message and I will continue to make it my own. This hike has challenged me in ways I couldn't have imagined, both physically and mentally. But the biggest takeaway is that I feel like I truly made a difference, not in just those around me, but in myself. I made a positive impact on a stranger. And that's the whole goal about this trip. And I couldn't ask for anything more. Now on this tour, if I had to do one big takeaway, it would be this. Love, trust, and death. Love the moment. Trust in yourself and death to your comfort zone.